Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in my quest to try and provide better content for my viewers and Patreons, I'm trying to step things up a little bit and get slightly more expensive products. So here we have a 2017 MacBook Air. Look at it, super, super thin thin, ridiculously thin on this side here. So it was bought spares or repair on eBay. It looks to be in amazing condition. There was no information with it apart from it doesn't work. There was no charger and annoyingly I've got two MagSafe chargers. I've got a, like an L-shaped one and a T-shaped one but neither of them fit this one which is quite irritating but apparently from the Apple shop for £10 you can buy a MagSafe 1 to MagSafe 2 adapter so I probably will do that tomorrow but what I'm thinking is if I take this apart and take the board out this is going to come out of it so I'm thinking that the MagSafe one adapter will fit in on here yeah it doesn't it doesn't work when I press the power button here nothing happens but yet it does look lovely I don't know whether it charges or not until we take it apart so let's bring it over to the blue map take it apart and fingers crossed this time I might have a little bit more luck with a MacBook than I have had in my previous video so like the other MacBooks we have various little screws around the edge here so let's see what size they are. Right, while I'm on doing this, let's give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. That's the group on Patreon who support these videos at the highest level. So this month, that consists of Operational 117, KitDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, the My Mate Vince Fan Club over on Facebook, Dorian from Hoover Lux Restorations, Doctor Restoration, Mr. Directory, Jaw Emotive Garage, Mediasteamer.com, and Rob Hughes. So, massive thanks to the massive. Thanks for providing that level of support. Right, that doesn't want to come up. Oh, yes it does. Right. Yes, brilliant. Oh, fantastic. Lovely and clean on that side, but lovely and dirty on the inside. And what do we have here? I can see the battery pack. I wonder why that is. Possibly because it looks like it's had a pot of tea or coffee poured into it. Ah! eBay. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, let's zoom in and show you. Now, water damage can sometimes be repairable if it was just on one section of the board and it was just like one or two components. But I can already see without even zooming in. It's a mess here, it's a mess here, it's a mess here, it's a mess here, uh, it's messy up here. And I've got, I can see damage on the board here, I can see damage on that chip there, I can see the heat pipe's got water on it here, I can see little bits of water staining on the battery which isn't gonna affect that. But uh, you can see that's not a small bit of water damage. And also, if it's gone here, the chances are probably as well that maybe even the uh, the keyboard's not going to work either. So again, it's just one of those uh, junky products. To uh, water damage is not a problem if, for example, the uh, the seller says it's water damaged. But it's just annoying with the whole thing about untested. So f to begin with, can you see up here? You can see damage along here. I mean, I don't even know what's under here, but no doubt it's probably going to be flooded with coffee or tea. That looks okay. Damage, 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 big damage, massive damage. So really what I should do is damage just close this up now I've still got the SSD in which is nice uh, I should probably just close this up now and use it for spares because maybe the screen still works maybe the battery still works it's just that I would like to see even up here it's got a bit hasn't it yeah uh, I would like to see you know what the situation is with it so now let's uh, what should we do 
Apologies, people watch my videos to relax. Sorry for moaning. Uh, I, what should I do here? Let's see if there's anything. Let's see if there's any voltage in the battery. There is 7.4 volts. What voltage should be in here? 7.6. Right, we've got voltage there. I can see what looks like a fuse here. So let's go on a, a ground and go on to this side of the fuse. 7.4. 7.4. Okay, well we definitely got voltage in that part there. Now I need to have a look online for schematics on this board. 7.4 there, 7.4 there. Right, so we've got, definitely got voltage going in. Imagine with all this water damage, well it can't be. I was gonna say, imagine if it was just to fact the keyboard, because the on and off button on this is on the actual keyboard. Imagine if it was just a case that the keyboard on and off button wasn't working, you know, like the the, the uh, Fusion, the Chinese laptop that I did. Let's take this all out completely and then try to get the MagSafe connector onto this here and see what happens with this little board. So I'm going to undo the battery to begin with. I presume that it pulls out this way. Yes, it does. Okay, so we've even got corrosion on the battery there. Yeah, okay. Right, I'll zoom in. Right, we've got staining around here. Lovely lot around this area. Up here, 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 <laughs> here. And down here as well. Okay. Right, just, just for the fun of it, I think I'm gonna put the SSD back in and uh, connect up the battery and then just put the MagSafe charger onto this bit here, MagSafe 1 onto this bit here. And uh, let's just see what it does. We've got fan spin. What? Well, I was not expecting that. But no light on. But maybe that's because this isn't the right charger for here. What? How can we have so much water damage and still have the fan spin? And it's still on now, isn't it? Obviously, I haven't got the uh, screen connected. And I can't do it now because that will blow the, black, the backlight. Is there any lights anywhere? going to hold down the oh we haven't got the uh, keyboard connected either have we right i'm gonna have to take out the battery what is going on after all my moaning and we have fan spin right what do i need to connect to this to get well let's forget about the keyboard because that's all corroded let's we've got this disconnected now let's connect up the screen just in case it was the uh just in case for example it's the corrosion here that was stopping it from turning on Imagine if we had a display. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's plug in the SSD. And that. Can't believe we got fan spin, what is going on? All right, let's try that again with the screen connected. Actually, we don't need the battery connected, do we? Is it gonna go off again? Yes, it is. Right, but there's nothing happening on the screen. There is, there's an Apple, oh my, oh my, my. There's an Apple logo. There's something here. I can see, I can see something there. So now, has the backlight gone or is the backlight on a different part of the board? This is unbelievable. That is crazy. Look at the damage on this board. Something came up on screen there, but there's no backlight. The thing is though, Maybe one of the other cables does the backlight. 
Or maybe that's the problem. Maybe the backlight circuit's gone. In which case then, it might be fixable. Maybe these chips are for, well, actually no, maybe it's not charging because of the chips, but yet the, uh, yeah. But still, there's something to go on, isn't there? I thought the whole thing would be ruined, but the, the CPU part of it appears to be working. So this is what we're gonna do. Take everything off, give it a really good clean with IPA, because I don't really need to know where the damage is because it's sort of damaged everywhere. And then what we'll do is we'll see what's not working and maybe we can take it, you know, take it from there one step at a time. It might be a really long video, but wouldn't it be amazing if we could get something out of this? Yes, excellent. So it's time to get scrubbing with the 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. So I've just given that the initial first clean, but there's still plenty of corrosion around the place. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my microscope and I'm gonna look really closely. And everywhere where I can see corrosion, I'm just gonna gently scrape it away with either a needle or the tweezers and then give it another clean. Right, I just wanna give you a quick example of the corrosion. So this is on that separate little board with the MagSafe connector on it. And you can see here, like when it's wet with IPA, it doesn't look bad. But when, you, uh, when it dries again, you can see that uh, all this corrosion here is on that side of the chip. So I've just got a little needle here, just scraping it away. So with something like this, maybe I could put some flux on it and then get the solder iron and gently tap the legs just to try to bring the solder shine back onto it. That might actually be okay, even though it looks a complete mess, I could be lucky with something like that. So you can see there's quite a lot of work to go ahead and do. You can see even up here now that uh, there's more corrosion on, uh, where are we? Here, all around here. Look at that. So I need to have a real close look. I'm not sure if a capacitor just came off there or not. Or is that, I don't know what that is there. So I need to look through the microscope and see exactly what I'm doing. So yeah, there's gonna be probably a good hour or more scraping and cleaning, and then uh, I'll get back to the filming. So about two hours have passed now, and it's come up much, much cleaner. I've scraped around every single chip, and I've made note of where the faults are, just the visual faults, and there's quite a few of them. But there's still gonna be lots of corrosion under the chips and stuff. Some are, some are tiny, some of the chips are tiny, but they would still be little BGA chips. So there's still gonna be like nine balls, even under the ones that are just a few millimeters by a few millimeters. So I'm not gonna be able to clean the corrosion from under that. So I am gonna put it in the ultrasonic cleaner for 30 minutes at 50 degrees Celsius. In here I have, I think it's deionized water and also a cleaning solution for PCBs as well. I'm just gonna show you uh, what I need to do. So on the small MagSafe board, there's just one pin that needs reflowing, that should be okay. On the little ribbon cable that connects the MagSafe board to the main board, two of the contacts have lifted, they've blackened and they've lifted, but I think I've been scraping them, I think I'll be able to solder them back on. The big problem is, uh, no, keyboard connector is, uh, is lifted, so that needs soldering down, that's on the board here. But annoyingly, the keyboard ribbon cable has a pin missing, so the actual soft ribbon cable, so that's gonna need painting in with conductive paint. There's lots to do here. Now, the biggest problem is, on the screen connector, the reason we haven't got backlight is because it's got two pins here feeding the backlight, they're completely black and burnt away. But I thought to myself, I was cleaning them, I was thinking, yeah, I might get away with that, then I looked on the inside, the pins are completely missing. So the two pins feeding the backlight, because the backlight is a lot higher voltage, have just completely burnt away. They're not there anymore on the actual connector on the board. So you know this little connector here? The two pins are not inside, uh, inside here to make contact with the ribbon cable. Then when I look at the ribbon cable that feeds from the screen that feeds into here, the two pins that should be on here are welded to the actual ribbon cable. So not only do I need a new connector here, I also pretty much need a new ribbon cable because it's melted and stuff. The, the plastic's missing where it goes into here on that side. I'm gonna to try to do a bit of a Vinci bodge on it. And this little component here, 
this little uh, whatever it is inductor or something here that feeds the two burnt pads that you can just you can see they're black just here now I know it's all blurred I'll show it closer when I'm actually doing the work but what this is what I'm thinking if I was to solder a wire from here and if I was to make a hole right the way through here I could then put a wire from here feed it through the hole and solder it onto the connector now that's a lot easier said than done because all of this is absolutely tiny so let's uh, pop it in here now just going to drop that in there and drop this in here okay so that's in there now and I'm going to put this on it's going to make quite a bit of noise for 30 minutes so I'll come back to this well there's no point in showing me taking it out I'll uh, it's late at night now it's uh, one what is it quarter past one in the morning so uh, what I'm going to do is look up the schematics and stuff and then do a bit more work on this tomorrow and see what happens with it fingers crossed I've got my hopes up now so uh, yeah it'd, it'd be lovely to see this work again <laughs> So it's the next day now and I'm all raring to go. I've got a load of soldering to do. So I've got the camera angle set up. I'm actually looking through a microscope myself. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna start with the easier ones. So for example, with this one here, I just need to resolder that little pin there. But now when I've been looking at it closely, I've put some IPA on it just to clean it up. But basically there's no continuity between here and the trace goes down to uh, here. So basically this via here has gone. So what you're gonna see now is probably gonna take me about two or more hours, but I'll be just fast forwarding through and just showing you a little bit of soldering on each of the things that I'm doing. Put a little bit of flux on everything that I'm soldering. Right, we've now got continuity all the way from here over to here, but we still won't have continuity going through the via, but I'm going to worry about that later, later on. Right, that's the first little bit done. Let's carry on with the rest. Right, so with this one you can see that I've got pins that are loose. Well, this pin's loose and these two pins look quite corroded, so I'm just going to reflow these and try to get a fresh bit of solder onto this one. I scraped it back, it looks like it's going to a little via here, so hopefully I'll be able to get something on that. And also on this side here, you can see that that pin, that dark pin there is also, uh, also needs reflowing. Now obviously with stuff like this, it would be just easier to get another ribbon cable and the keyboard cable as well, you'd be able to get another ribbon cable for that, but I haven't got them. Now I know I can buy them, but I'm gonna to try to repair what I've already got, and then if I can't repair it, then I can always buy one then. Okay, you can see now that that one is also done. So this is the keyboard connector here 
and a lot of the pins are very uh, blackened. So let's try to put some flux on it and reflow. Now if you have a close look here you can see they're much better. The two black ones there, the black one in the middle and the black one at the end have now gone. I'll try this, I mean, if it's short, what's going to happen? I suppose the fuse will blow. In fact, let's check the fuse, I think this is the fuse here. Well, the fuse is blown anyway. Okay. Yeah, so I suppose when this all shorted here and knocked the fuse out, I wonder if everything else is working. Right. So that's the idea there, I'm going to be pulling it through like that. So I'm going to look up that fuse and see if it's the same. I haven't got another one of these boards, but I have got some old MacBook Pro boards. So I'm going to have a look at see if it's the same fuse. Right, it's the same fuse, so I'm just going to pop this one off. You know, just thinking about it, I have got a connector on this board. I wonder if they're all the same. They might well be the same, although this is from a MacBook six years, MacBook Pro six years previously. That might well be the same connector. But anyway, I'm going to try doing my wire technique, and if that doesn't work, then maybe we can look into changing it out. So I've taken the battery out now and that's exposed this ribbon cable down here. So luckily on this little board here I can't see any signs of damage although you can see on the edges of the trackpad here there's loads of brown all around here and all up here as well. So I'm going to give that a little clean and uh, pop this cable out and let's see if we can repair this using some silver paint. Right now this is it here and if you have a look there's quite a few scratch marks on it that was just me cleaning it but can you see this is actually missing here. So I think that's the only one. So what I'm going to try to do is just scrape away this bit on top so I can get back to a little bit of copper so I can run some silver paint from here to here. You can see what I'm going to be doing now. I'm just going to be running a tiny little bit of silver paint from the edge of the real contact here to here. Hopefully you can see the dots where it clamps down. I'm hoping it will just clamp down onto the metal here rather than onto the uh, silver paint. So with this conductive paint, the silver paint, I'm going to be heating it up ever so slightly because this one's getting old and uh, I've noticed that if I just give it a tiny little bit of heat it flows quite nice. So I'm just going to put that bit there and then get the hot air on that just for a few seconds. Okay. 
There you go. And I'm going to apply it with a needle. Now I could put a tiny little bit of captain tape either side. The thing is, it's so small that uh, I think it's just gonna the captain tape is just gonna lift, and the paint's still gonna go underneath it anyway. So what I'm gonna do is just put it on, and then when it dries, I'll scrape it off again, so it's not shorting with the neighbour. I think that will do. I'm going to heat it up and then uh, scrape it when it's dry. Right, that's got continuity to the other side now. So you can hear my leads. So I'm just going to put one of them on the other side of this connector. And if you have a listen on this one here, you can hear it's coming up here. And now I'm going to move to the next one. Yeah, you can hear it stopped. Now I'm going to move my other lead. You can hear it starts. Now I'm going to move to this one. You can hear it stops. Move my other lead, and it starts. So we now know that there's no shorts between uh, between these. Well, I'm going to put a little bit of captain tape just over this bit here, just to give it a little bit of protection. That's it fixed for the moment, anyway, and captain tape on it. Now let's try to do the hard part and solder that connector onto the ribbon cable and onto the board. All right, this is going to be a really awkward angle to film, but basically. On this connector here, the first ones are ground, and then we've got not connected, and then three and four is for the backlight, and then we've got five is not connected, and then something like an LED return. Let's just give it a go, it can only be wrong. Right, so I've got the uh, solder on those two pins. Let's see if I can solder that wire onto the two pins. Yes, I can. I'll tell you what, that actually went on. Okay, let's see if I can get a macro in on that. All right, so you can see now that I'm thinking this pin should be the ground. The one that's not connected, I'm pretty sure, has blown out of it completely. And then I've gone on to the two pins here, which are going to be for the backlight. I'm thinking that's not connected, that one there. And then uh, we start off again with the LED return. So if I was to put some solder mask on top of here, maybe that would protect this from shorting against here. Maybe I could put solder mask on and then possibly even a bit of captain tape. It might work. See, my biggest worry is when I put it through, is that the top of this wire here is going to be no longer enameled because I've put heat on it, I've been pushing it through here, which has been scraping it. So if this wire here hits this here, it's the same as all the voltage going to ground, which is what's happened before via water, but now I'm doing an even better one, metal to metal. So uh, yeah, that's the problem. Let me put some solder mask on that, and then put the UV light on it, and let it go off. Right, so that's gone hard now, so let's see if we can ease it in. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Right, let's see if that short's still there. In fact, maybe that should go above that little connector here. There we go. 
Right, let's see if that's still shorting. Right, so from there to there, it's 0.7 ohms. Let's see what it is from here to here. Oh wow, how's that possible? It's not shorting. Let's see from here to here. Well, look at that. Maybe it's because I've cut it and I haven't got a good connection at the ends, but uh, I don't think that's I don't think that's shorting anymore. Right, unless it's come away. I don't want to tug at it, but unless it's come away. Right, let's, uh, you know, from the actual connection, let's solder that on to the end here. I'm just going to cover that excess wire in captain tape. Right, let's change camera angles and then uh, turn this on and get ready for the bang. Here we go. No, uh, oh, green light. Yes, we've got a green light. We've got an amber light. Yes, 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 we've got an amber light. Fantastic, look at that. Excellent, fan spinning. We've got a chime. Will we have anything on the backlight? No, right, we've got nothing, uh, nothing displaying here. Okay, uh, I'm going to get a light and shine it through the back just to see if we've got it. Oh, mind you, I haven't got the hard drive in. But uh, that doesn't matter, we should still have something on the screen there, shouldn't we? Fan spinning, the oh! What am I doing? I haven't got anything on the CPU. Let's disconnect that. Let's put the heat pipe back on. Well, okay, I'm gonna put some thermal paste on there, put the heat pipe back on, and then uh, get a torch, shine it through. Might even connect it up to an external monitor or something, see what's, uh, see what's happening with it. Let's just see now if that has shorted out again. If the fuse is blown. I didn't hear any pop though. Yeah, the fuse is gone again. Right, okay. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Uh, fuse is gone again. I haven't got any more of those fuses, which is a shame. Do you know what? Maybe there's other fuses on the board that I could use in place of that. But that, that backlight fuse does look different than the other ones. Uh, what am I going to do now? Right, okay, leave them with me for a bit. I'm going to put thermal paste on. I'm going to see whether anything's displaying on the TV. This should be safe now because the fuse is blown, so I don't have to worry about this short causing a fire or anything because the fuse is now blown. And uh, I just want to see what is and isn't working on this because maybe the USB ports are not working, maybe the headphone jack's not working. I want to see what's happening with it before I spend hours trying to work out what I'm going to do on here. So I'll get back to this later when I have more info. Okay, good news. I've been messing with this and I've managed to get the latest Mac OS on it. Big Sur. It didn't go easy because what is happening is it would go so far and then my fan over here would stop kick in for about 10 seconds, stop, kick in for 10 seconds, stop, kick in, and it kept doing that like a boot loop forever. So then I had to unplug the battery, plug it back in, it would come up with the Apple logo here, and then after about three or four minutes, it would start downloading again. So I had to do that two or three times to finally get it to load up. Now when I turn it off and turn back on, it seems to be fine. I'm wondering whether when it comes to doing updates, it can't turn itself on. One other issue I found is the backlight for the keyboard. You know, the key lights, they work when I first will turn it on, but then when I start doing things, they just stop working. When I press the FN keys, it just comes up with a dash across, like it's not enabled. But when I first will turn it on, I can have it from dim all the way to fully bright and back down to dim again. Strange, but then, for example, I plugged in the USB uh, dongle at the side here to show you a video working, and uh, now the keyboard lights are not working. Is this gonna uh, come on? Well, Look at what we have here sent here. all the way. Don't think I've ever. There we go. So, uh, yeah, Wi Fi's working, Ethernet's working, all those things appear to be working. So, I think the USBs are working. So, we really are nearly getting there now. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to persevere looking at this little connector. 
Now I have actually bought some connectors on eBay. They're gonna take a few days to arrive. They weren't expensive, only three pounds. And I've bought some fuses as well for the backlight circuit. Again, I think I got two of them for two pound 50, so they're not expensive at all. You can also buy a cable. So this cable doesn't go straight into the screen. It goes to a connector on the screen. So if I replace the connector, and the cable, 100%. I think this would be working fine as long as the backlight circuit isn't broken. The problem I've got is by replacing the connector here, you've got to take off this bezel. This is glued down, so I don't really want to get involved in that at this moment in time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to gouge out that hole even bigger, or maybe what I might do is cut the traces completely and get the wire from the actual cable, or the two wires from the cable, pull them out, and extend them straight onto the inductor there. And that's bypassing the connector here. Yeah, that might be a better job. So uh, leave it with me. I'm gonna have a think about what I'm doing here, fiddle around here for a while, and uh, hopefully then it'd be amazing if we could finish up the video with uh, the backlight working. I would absolutely love that. Okay, what you're looking at here is the actual connector that goes off to the screen, this one here. So what I did is I pulled the wires out of it and they kind of just all fell apart as they came out here. And there was loads of wires and I thought it might be nice thick wires, but it's not. What it is, is there's two going over to this side here. So I presume those two are the two that are burnt. The wires look quite big. You can see that there's one. I can't even, you know, this is so small. Right, there we go. There's one here, this one here, and the other one is here. But that's not a single wire. <laughs> it's a coaxial cable. So basically you have a thin cable in the middle and then you have a load of wire wrapped round that one there. So I presume the outer one is gonna be ground because it is short into ground and the middle one is here. So forget about this black one, it's just getting in the way. There, this one here, that's on the needle now. That's the middle one, which the signal's going down. Super, super small. Look at my finger. It's absolutely tiny. So I'm trying to strip these back. I can't even use strippers to strip them back. So I'm trying to strip them back with needles and also the soldering iron to try to melt away the outside. But look, when I first of all did it a little bit longer, they were still shortened, the middle one was still shortened, but now I've stripped them back more, and look what's happening. So what's happened is these have melted together, so the inner sheath has melted, so the inner cables are connecting the outer ones. So this is the outer one here that I've just put a lump of solder on to try to keep it together, and when I go to the, uh, uh, when I go onto here, you can hear it shorting, but look, when I go onto here, not that one, this one. I've just tinned up the end of that there, it's not shorting. So now I also need to uh, trim back this one here, and then I need to join the middle two together and run them to a wire to the inductor. Just before I seal this all up, so what I've done is, the two inner wires I've soldered onto this red wire here. The two outer wires I've put onto the black wire. I don't really know if I need to, but I think I am gonna ground that, just in case it's something to do with noise uh, taking the noise away from the inner two, not too sure. But uh, yeah, I'll put a heat shrink on there and now I'm gonna also put a heat shrink over this one here now. And then hopefully at the end, I can kind of, I might even put some rubber, you know this stuff here, the liquid tape. I might even put some of this on it as well if I need to, to uh, make sure that they're not gonna short against each other. And then I can put this back over here and hopefully it means that this will all work as it did before, it's just that I've taken away the two wires out of them that were damaged. That's what I'm hoping. A few hours later and this monstrosity up here is now done. So initially I thought that that was an inductor, it's not, it's a capacitor because this side of it here is actually going to ground. So it's not an inductor, it's a capacitor. So I've attached a red wire which feeds the two backlight pins, I believe, to the top of the capacitor. When I have no capacitor on here, the top one is measuring, the top pad is measuring, I think it was seven or eight volts. So I'm hoping when it sees the backlight that it will boost up to whatever it needs to be, the 30, 40, however many volts it needs to be to light the backlight. So the good news is now, if I was to put my meter to continuity, where it beeps, if I was to take a ground, for example, if I was to take a ground from here and go onto the bottom of the capacitor, we have a short, but the top of the capacitor we don't, and that's where that red wire is connected. So before we had a full short on there, and now we don't. So fingers crossed it might be okay. Now I've done something naughty. I have ordered up the fuses from eBay. They were only 
two of them for two pounds something so they're not expensive and they're the correct fuse i think it's 32 volts at three amps but i don't want to wait for them to arrive because i've done so much work on this now i'm desperate to see if it's going to work or not so what i've done is which is wrong i've just got some 0.02 millimeter wire which is tiny this stuff you can barely even see and i've jumpered the fuse with this stuff now although this is going to blow a lot quicker than for example one millimeter wire I'm pretty sure it would still blow way after a 32 volt 3 amp fuse. So if this does work now, of course I'm not going to leave that. That's purely to see now if it's going to work or not. So I am actually ready to turn this on and I'm massively apprehensive. I promised I haven't done this. I've saved this for the camera. So it might go bang. I might cause a load of damage on this backlight circuit now because the fuse, or I might cause damage to the backlight because the fuse is no longer a fuse. It's a piece of wire. Anyway, that's in there. Let's now open it up and see if it's going to do anything. I'd love to see this screen light up. I really, really would. Right, here goes. Come on now. The fan spinning. Ah, uh, it's not lighting up. I was sure that was going to light up. No, the backlight's still not on. So there's something else gone on that. Oh, disappointed. Massively, massively disappointed. I can see the Apple symbol there. Right, okay. I thought that was going to work. Also, it doesn't seem to turn off when I close the lid. Right, let's uh, see what voltage we've got on this capacitor here. We've got 7.5 volts. So do we need to have more? Is that because it's not recognising? It's not recognising this. Not really sure where to take it from here. So it's the next day now. This is my third day on this. And uh, what I'm going to do is take the board out and have a look at the back light driver chip, which is on the opposite side of the board underneath here. We've got the board out now. Obviously, I can't disconnect this one now because I've got wires soldered to it all. So it's linked to this permanently. Uh, this is the tiny little chip here. Let's zoom right the way in on it. This one here, and even though it's been through the ultrasonic cleaner, it still doesn't look happy, does it? And I've scratched all around here as well. So what I'm going to do is, let's just try to reflow it to begin with. Annoyingly, it's a BGA chip, and there's quite a few balls under here. I think it might be, I think there might be four or five going across. So we've probably got like 16 or maybe five by five. It might be 25 balls under here. I'm going to put loads on it. I'm just going to add a bit more heat into the board itself, just around the area. So I don't completely burn up the chip. Right, let me go straight on the chip now. Yeah, okay, that's definitely reflowed. I'm gonna let that cool. Don't think it's gonna make a difference, but uh, we'll see. Nope, got the Apple logo, but there's nothing happening. Right, this is interesting. So this is the schematics here, and this is the board. Well, this is board view, and this is the, the chip that I'm working on. Now, have a look at this chip here. This is, uh, if I zoom right into it, Number five here is PPV out switch, I presume, LCD backlight feedback. Now, I've just taken that chip off and that particular ball was very corroded. In fact, it, it, there wasn't a ball left on the pad. There was just a, a little stump left on the board. Now, if I go to view and go to flipboard, look where it comes up. So you know the LCD connector here with the pins, you know, three and four, these ones here with the backlight that were burnt through. Well, look at this component here. This component here on that side here, number one, is PPV out switch backlight feedback. And then on this side, it goes from that side, it goes to the connector here. So I think what's happened is, although we're, I'm just curious as to why we're getting seven volts here. Well, I suppose we're getting seven volts because that's going through the chip, but maybe it's not boosting it. So I think I'm going to replace that chip. 
Right, so what I've done is I've taken the chip off a donor board, this one here. Now let me just show you the difference between, I don't even think it's going to be too small to see, but uh, ignore that, there's a chip on the corner, that's just from where it was stuck to the board with flux. But can you see this pin up here is completely missing. So you can see they're all silver, but look at this one that I'm tapping now. That one's gone, and that's the one that's going out to the other side of the board, I presume feeding the actual backlight. So uh, yeah, completely burnt away, and I've been rubbing that with flux and having my soldering iron and going over and over and over again, trying to tin up the pads. There is no pad there, I can't find a pad there. So I think the corrosion has gone right deep down inside it. So yeah, I've taken one off this other board. I don't know if, if it's uh, if it's good or not, but uh, it looks it looks it looks pretty nice. So what I'm going to try to do is basically put solder on these bits here and on the board, and hopefully between both of them they might meet up. Now I've got a massive tip on my eye, and the reason is because on the actual board itself, it's uh, it's sapping away all my heat when I use a small tip. It's hard to explain how impossibly this small this is until you try doing it yourself. When you see it on the screen and other people doing it, it just all looks so easy. But it's, uh, it's incredibly, incredibly difficult. This thing is tiny. Right, I'm happy with them. I'm happy with them. Let's give them a good clean. Hey, there we have it. So you can see this solder on each of the uh, each of the ones there. Right now, let's do the same on the board. See, a lot of these on here are not actually connected. Well, I might leave it like that. The hope here is by having a bit of solder on the board and a bit of solder on the chip, that will add up to a similar amount of solder to having an actual ball on there. Well, I think I'm going to run with that. Right, I've just got to double check it's the right way round. Yeah, let's heat it up and see what happens. Airflow 6 out of 8 and 480 degrees Celsius. Right, well that's moving now, so hopefully that might have done it. Well, I'm going to let it cool and then uh, get the board ready to be put back in and then we'll see what's happening on the screen. Right, here we go, let's pop the battery in. That's in there. Now let's get the charger. Remember there's no speakers or anything, so there's not going to be any chime. Yeah, the fan. Why is that other? Hold on. The fan spinning. Yes, it is. Wonder why the light's not on. 
Well, I can worry about that later. Oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. Brilliant. Did you see the Apple? Did you see the Apple logo? Oh, fantastic. It was the driver. It was the, uh, the driver chip. Now, has it gone off or is it doing something else? Oh, hallelujah. Three days, three days I've been on this. Look at that. Okay, it's gone off. I'm not, am I bothered about that? Why did it go off? Hold on. See, the light and stuff's not on. Maybe something's shorting. Well, that's come out there. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Unless it's just uh, burnt out again. Oh, this has come off here. Let me put it back together. Hopefully you've seen a bit of the logo. It's brilliant. Okay, fully back together. And then I'll film when the, uh, hopefully the backlight will work properly. I think something's shorting as it's going up and down with the lid. Right, it's back together apart from the back case. Now, let's see if it's going to liven up. Here we go. Have I got fan spin? Yep, yeah, fan spin. Chime. Please, please, please let the back light. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, oh, amazing. Oh, amazing. So what was the faults on this one here? They were numerous, weren't they? We had blown backlight connector, blown backlight cable going to the backlight. We had a blown backlight driver. We had a faulty keyboard connector. We had a faulty connector going from the MagSafe thing over into the board. Uh, oh, Vince, look at that with Big Sir running on it. Oh, just so good, so good, fantastic. I'm gonna uh, tidy, yeah, there you go, keyboard's working. I'm gonna tidy this up, put the back cover on it, and then when the fuse arrives, I'll be doing that off camera. So I'm just gonna clean this up, finish off the video, and then, uh, yeah, take it from there. So here we have it, and it is looking absolutely immaculate. So it is actually about a week later. I did finish up the video, but I thought, you know what? I've been using this for the last week or so, so why don't I just film the end bit again and let you all know that it's working perfectly. The key lights are all working fine. That was just a setting. There's a setting that you do that says something about in low light or something. So obviously every time I was doing it, I had the studio lights down on it, so it wasn't kicking in. Now that I've turned that off, you can now adjust the key lights. You can just see them there going up and down there and you can see it up and down on the screen. Check this out on the brightness of the screen. That's all working perfectly. I can't find anything on here that doesn't work. And the main thing is how long the battery lasts. This battery seems to last for an absolute, where's my cursor gone? The battery seems to last for an absolute eternity, which is really, really good. Now, I never thought I'd say this about Apple products, but I am really being won over by this little MacBook Air down here. The only negative I've got about it is if I had have paid all that money in 2017 for it, it looks very dated with the massive bezel, but I believe it's because it's the same design from many years before that. So I presume the one that came out after this looks a lot more modern. But uh, yeah, this, this seems to be like really, really thin, lightweight, feels like good quality i can't really fault it and for 200 pound i'm well happy with it and forget about all that the very fact you've seen how damaged it was and somehow it seems to be working well i mean maybe there's things on it that i haven't discovered yet but everything i've tried it connects to the tv fine everything that i've tried on it is working so i'm well happy with this one here and i think for 200 pound i have actually got myself a bit of a bargain just to let you guys know i would never sell this because obviously even if i said how much has been repaired people wouldn't expect it was as damaged as it was so uh, it's this is not something that i would do to make money even though we're working one of these i think costs a lot more than 200 pounds but there we have it i'm well 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 chuffed with that and check this out look i've got myself the little adapter from the apple shop there to turn the old magsafe one into a magsafe 2 it was only 10 well i say only 10 pounds but to be fair it does feel again high quality all made of metal so and it works so that is it for this video i'm amazed that this thing has lived to fight on and long may it continue hopefully it might last a while which would be great if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up take care everyone <laughs>